Assalam wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One more time. Assalam wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, much better. Okay. On behalf of Masjid Omar's youth group, I'd like to welcome everybody to the first night of the 30 for 30 Abdullah Brothers Ramadan Masjid Tour. Alhamdulillah, we have the honor and the distinction of being the first masjid of this tour. So Alhamdulillah, we're very, very honored to uh, have with us tonight Hamza and Hussein Abdullah. Just a quick uh, bio before I turn over to them. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Hamza and Hussein both uh, attended university at University uh, Washington State University. They're from Pomona, California originally. So they're from our, our own neck of the woods, Alhamdulillah. Uh, went to Washington State University. Hamza used to play uh, for the Cardinals most recently. Started off with the Bucks, then went to the Denver Broncos. Hussein, starting safety for the Minnesota Vikings. And the reason why I say used to, because most notably people know, SubhanAllah, they actually have put their NFL careers on hold to attend Hajj this year. SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar. Uh, along with that, they actually gained some notoriety uh, through ESPN, CNN, other networks for uh, their fasting during the NFL season, during training camp. That was highlighted uh, on those programs, so they've gained notoriety for that as well. And uh, we just welcome to our, to our community tonight, inshallah. Very happy to have them here. Without further introduction, please welcome Hamza and Hussein Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum. Can, can you guys hear me? Can everybody hear me? Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I am Hussein Abdullah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm actually honored to be here. I get nervous every time I get a mic in front of me and everybody's staring at me. Uh, makes me feel important. I don't feel I deserve it, in all honesty. But um, I, I really, this talk is really geared towards the youth. Is, is that better? Okay. Okay, it feels like I'm about to do some kind of workout class or something. Uh, all right. But uh, this talk is really geared toward the youth, so uh, all of our elders, please just bear with us. Uh, but I, I really just want to talk to you about who you, who you keep as your friends and who you have as your, as your inner circle. Um, there was a time where I thought that I was actually smarter than my dad, who's right here in the front row. And I thought I could choose my friends uh, for myself. And he said, there was, there was this one guy in particular, he was like, don't hang around him. I was like, why not? He's a cool guy. I've been knowing him since kindergarten. This is uh, my freshman year in high school. He was like, nope, I'm telling you, just leave him, leave him alone. I'm like, man, I've known this guy since kindergarten. We was cool in middle school. And now all of a sudden, I just can't hang around with him no more. Like, I didn't understand. I didn't understand why at the time. Uh, come senior year in high school, I'm working to get a Division One scholarship. I have a lot of scouts coming in and recruiters coming in and offers coming in here and there. And I'm looking at this other guy, and although he was pretty good on the on the field as well, in the, he I was I was going to say in the classroom, but that was if he showed up. Mm. Um, he he was he was he was never in class. He's always hanging out, uh, running the streets, doing things he shouldn't be doing. And he was actually having a good football season, but his grades made him ineligible. And he couldn't even play the second half of the, of the year. And he actually threw away a Division I scholarship because of his behavior. And that's somebody who used to be in my inner circle. So I... I I thank I thank my father for telling me to to leave him alone. Otherwise, all the all the different things that I've done in my life probably wouldn't have happened. So, um, really, really guard your inner circle. Um, you have brothers and sisters, and you have a mother and a father. Uh, you have cousins, uncles, aunties, and they're put there for a reason. Start start off at home. Make make sure the ties inside the home are are strong. Then, then venture outward. And when you venture outward, come to the mosque. Come to the mosque. They have a lot of good uh, youth programs, alhamdulillah. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of different things going on. I'm pretty sure you guys have a lot of basketball stuff going on. Uh, are, you, are you guys into soccer? Uh, yeah. Football. We're, we're, we're Americans. Uh, we, we play football. Uh, <laughs> but uh, come. But seriously, come to the mosque. There's different things. They have different programs, different things uh, to keep you from being around negativity. And this is this is Southern California. I'm not 
overly familiar with this area. I grew up in Pomona, California. What was outside the home wasn't wasn't always a good thing. Even if you were going to sh uh, just shoot basketball, there's things that could find you. So if you go to the mosque, home deal a lot. You can go to the mosque, you shoot basketball, you hang out with some friends, you mix a lot, you're good. Hang out with people who have the same goals that you have. Uh, don't don't start hanging out with people that you have no idea where they're going in life. You have no idea about anything outside of what you see at school. So just just make sure that you guard and protect your and protect your inner circle. Um, I, I don't like to sit here and lecture, so inshallah it's going to turn uh, interactive. I, uh, I like the Q and A style better because then I know what you really want to hear. So, but I'll just say if you, if you take something. Make sure you guard your inner circle, and I'll turn it over to Hamza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As my brother said, uh, my name is Hamza, a uh, seven-year veteran in the NFL. I graduated from Washington State University in 2004, and alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me to be on a few teams and off a few teams. And one thing that I noticed was just the Muslim Ummah. You know, I've been a chance, I've, I've had a chance to be in Tampa Bay, Cleveland, Denver, uh, and most recently Arizona. And, you know, some things that are r real near and dear to my heart. One of the things is taking care of your sisters. You know, alhamdulillah, the brother invited us today, and I sent him an email. I said, okay, well, you know, just make sure that the sisters have exactly what the brothers have. Unfortunately, that's not, I'm not going to say that's not what happened, but at most massages, that's not what happens. You know, my wife, when we were in Denver, she, she had just became Muslim. She had fasted a year during Ramadan, and then the next Ramadan, the first day, she says, Hamza, I want to become Muslim. Alhamdulillah. But we get to the masjid, the brothers have this 15-course meal, and the sisters have one piece of pizza to share. So, you know, today at, the, at, at Juma, the Khatib was talking about taking care and taking hold of Ramadan and not letting the month pass you by. Well, how can we get to that part if we can't even satisfy the basic structures of Islam? Their sisters running away from Islam because of us. This is upon us. Are we protecting our sisters? Their sisters, they're, they're hijabis. When they walk outside the house, everyone knows they're Muslim. But for me, what do I have to do? I have to take my kufi off, or I have to put my kufi on, put my jalabi on, put my thobe on, you know, tell everyone, my name is Hamza Abdullah. Now everyone knows I'm Muslim. It's easy for us. We will never know what these sisters go through. So because of that, we need to stand up and protect our sisters. Alhamdulillah. Because I have a bunch of sisters. Alhamdulillah, a lot of them are here today. I have a wife. I have a daughter. And you know, subhanAllah, I wasn't going to bring them today, but I spoke with my cousin, Akili, and he was bringing his wife. So I said, I'll bring my wife, alhamdulillah. So this is, this is near to me. You know, I turn around and, you know, there's, there's boxes of dates for all the brothers. And alhamdulillah, the sheikh comes in. He says, have the sisters, have you broke your fast? They say, no. So, you know, I, alhamdulillah, you know, I, I was going to talk about, you know, taking care of Ramadan and spending time in the masajids. But how can we even get to the masajid if we can't even satisfy our sisters' needs? That's what a man is about. We are the protector. We are the shepherd of our sheep. Allah made us stronger. Allah made us, this is why we have muscles. This is why we're the head of the household, to protect our sheep. But how can we protect them? Do you know if sisters not fasting, of not wearing hijab, of not coming to the masjid? Why would I? If I was a sister, why would I? I can get better treatment somewhere else. So it's upon us. I'm taking this as this is my duty for me. I'm talking to myself first and foremost. I have to be a better brother. I have to be a better son. I have to be a better husband. I have to be a better father. And then we can go to, then we can go to taking care of Ramadan. You know, they had the movie the, the Dark Knight, you know, released last night. It was either do that or go to Tarawi. Why is that even an option? What are, what, what, what are our goals? The Khatib said today that Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, you know, was talking to Allah. He, he got to talk directly to Allah. And he said, you know, Ya Allah, you know, this is, this is me and you. 
Has anyone else had this opportunity? Just, just me and you? No. And he was behind 70,000 uh, hijab. Allahu alam. He said, but the son of Adam, as long as they fast, they will meet me on the day of judgment, and he will remove the hijab. Inshallah, we go to Jannah, and we get to see Allah. He will reveal himself to us. That is the goal. That is the goal. The goal is not to buy a fancy watch, to get, go drive a fancy car, to get a fancy house. What will that do for us? I've seen it. I've seen a guy spend $100,000 in one sitting. I have seen it. I have seen this. But that's what we're all chasing. And they throw all these different distractions on us. They make us fight against each other. They tell us how to live our life. They tell us what Islam is. They tell us when to fast and when to break our fast. They tell us that, oh, no, you're not a practicing Muslim, Hamza, so you can't go here. Practicing Muslim? What does that mean? You're either Muslim or you're not. Oh, no, you can't do this because you're not practicing. Oh, no, I'm, I'm Muslim, but I'm not practicing. What does that mean? We're a Muslim. When we, come to the, when we come to the masjid, it should be just big hugs for everybody. Mashallah, you're my brother in Islam. Because inshallah, what are we looking for? We're looking for the pleasure of Allah. That's it. We were created to do what? To worship Allah. That's it. Everything else is secondary. And alhamdulillah, we had a brother, Brian, make shahada today. So what happens? He comes tomorrow. Oh, shoot. He took his shahada yesterday. He gets no hug from me today. Is that how it works? It can't. We're Muslim. We want shade on the day of judgment, right? So inshallah, we meet our brother, and I love this brother simply for the sake of Allah. Inshallah, we'll be shaded. That's what we're working for. This other stuff, it means nothing. So please, take care of our sisters, take care of ourselves. We are the men of the household for a reason. I, when I was in college, you know, I was H. You know, it, it just was simpler. And then you, you go around and you're like, dude, my name is Hamza. That's not that hard. You know, you have some other names, you know, but they're pronouncing the entire German last name. But your name is Hamza. Five letters, and they can't, they can't pronounce your name. They have to call you H. Oh, you have anything for short? So let us be Muslim. You know, let us, let us take charge. You know, this starts now. Today is our first day. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we'll be going around the country. And inshallah, we would love for you guys to tag along on the trip. I know you can't physically be there, but we'll be online. You guys can go to abdullahbros.com. Hit us up on Twitter, at abdullahbros. Hit us up on Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com slash Abdullah Brothers. But we would really just love to meet our, brother, our brothers and our sisters and let, your, let our family become your family and really, you know, really just love you for the sake of Allah. So, inshallah, with that, I would love to open it up for Q&A, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Prayers during a game? Uh, well, you can't, you can't just go to the 50-yard line and <laughs> start making some light. Um, unfortunately, I'd say there's, there's not many Muslim, Muslims in the NFL to where there's a, there's a huge need. Because if there's not a huge need for it, they're not going to have a, a, a room or a certain place where you can go and you can pray at. So a lot of the time we have a 12 o'clock game. Uh, that's typically what it is, in my, a 12 o'clock game. Uh, so as soon as the game is over, go in there and shower up, makes a lot then. I would say that's, uh, we're, we're, not, we're not like some of the soccer clubs over in the Middle East where it's time for Salat, everybody's Muslim, they drop and they make Salat. Um, inshallah, one, one, there'll be a time where, we, where we'll get to that, but right now we're not there. Yes, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, uh, one of my brothers, we call him Sheikh Sheba, he, mashallah, he's been a study, a learner since he was little, and he just, you know, he informed me, he said, Hamza, you know, just make a small dua, you know, and inshallah, Allah will reward you. So, you know, in my duas, 
I just tried to do a couple of different duas, and you know, so and I ask a lot, you know, Allah, you know, uh, please bless every step that I take to be in the sake of Your name, you know, for the sake of You, and a step towards good and a step away from evil. So you know, we're in the middle. You know, we'll be. Uh, this is exactly how to be, uh, and I'm not pretending. Uh, let's say the call was open me 43. They say open me gash 43. Ready break. And then I'm ready to play. And I just have a few different duas that I go to. And, you know, and if it's quick, subhanAllah, you know, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so it's, you know, so every single step that we take, inshallah, we want barakah for it. You know, when you get in the car, you know, you just got your BMW wash, you want to drop the window, or you don't want to drop the windows, you just want to let the sunroof down. And you want to sit back and you want to ride your car. But, I mean, are you getting barakah from that? No, probably not. So what happens, you get in there, you know, okay, let me listen to Suri Yassin or something like that. You know, this is a long story. I have a 20-minute drive. I can listen to Suri Yassin. Or I can listen to Surah Rahman or something like that. So it's just about doing those small steps that, you know, we were what? We were biding times. You know, every time there's a stoplight, what do we do? Everybody picks up their cell phone, text, text, text. You know, put... Put, put a C, CD on, put a nasheed on or something like that, and inshallah, Allah will make it easy for us. Any questions from the sister side? No. I got two questions. Huh? First question, um, obviously, you know, in everyday life, we have uh, temptations, but I'm pretty sure in the NFL, you guys get a lot more temptations with a lot more money. How do you guys, as righteous Muslims, avoid that? Keep strong with And, what, and what's your second question? My second question is, how do you guys control your anger on the football field? <laughs> All right. On the football field. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, I mean, obviously, there's things before, but I mean, to a certain extent, you guys don't let guys run the club to the point where you like to get personal. I'm not going to say personal with it, but, you know, keep it at a certain level. Hussein has a, a story for that, so remind him to tell you. Okay. Okay, so the, so the first one about uh, temptation. I would say for me, my first uh, three years, it was easy. Or actually, my first two years, it was easy because I was a special teams player. Nobody cares about a special teams player. <laughs> the media doesn't care. Nobody. I came went from Pullman, Washington, to Eden Prairie, Minnesota. So I'm, I'm hanging out with the guys that are just happy to be in the NFL. So, so we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel. So you go to work, you go home, they invite you to go out. You say, no, you go to work, go home. Simple. Next two years, now I'm a starter. Now I'm around guys that make $10 million a year that, and has been making that for years. And like how Hamza said, they, they don't have a, a, a value of the dollar. You'll see $50,000 come and go off a coin flip. And mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's weird. <laughs> I'll just say that. And then there, there, there are stories and different things, but you really, you really do just got have to, uh, buckle down for the most part and say, what's important? Like I'm saying, am, am I, am I chasing that or am I, or am I chasing, uh, Jenna? So you, you really have to say what's important to me and that has to, uh, take over. Um, and then as far as anger on the football field is football first and first and foremost like, like field, sure, you know, uh, right right like there there's always i mean it's the nature of the beast uh when you when you got guys that are that amped up things will be said uh i mean we hit people for a living um <laughs> how do i control my tongue you know what there, there was a time where I, I'll say I had a potty mouth. But then I said, okay, I'm going to switch it, and I'm just going to be very sarcastic. But in then I read that we can't be sarcastic. <laughs> so, so in all, and then in all honesty, I just, I just started playing. I just, I just don't say much anymore. But there was, there was one, one time where I'm going against a guy on punt. I think his name is George Wilson. He's a safety for the, for the uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Bills. Bills. And as soon as the play starts, he charges off at me, hits me. I hit him. I try to slam him on the ground. He's trying to slam me. He hits me under my chin. I punch him, not in the face, but <laughs> I punch him to get him off me. And no, like, we're like, we're like, like, seriously, we're trying to dump each other on the ground like we're this close. And then the whistle blows, and then we just send him. He's like, hey, man, I seen that ESPN story, man. I got to say, this is so nice. <laughs> so, you know, we, we shook hands.
ends, it was all cool, much love. Everything was fine. In, but bef in between the whistles, he's my enemy. He has on a different color jersey. That's, that's how we're wired. After the whistle, it's all love. There's nothing after that. And I'll uh, go back to your question about temptation. Is One thing we have to realize is we're not perfect. You know, everyone wants to sit up and say, oh, man, these brothers are here and this and that, and they're just so perfect. We're the furthest thing from perfect, and I'll be the first person to tell you. You know, we ask a lot for forgiveness every day. I ask a lot to forgive my past, my future, and my now, my present. And what we have to realize is, you know, this is my brother. That's why what our mother taught us and what we grew up on was one for your brother what you want for yourself. You know, no matter what it is. You know, you see your brother, oh, man, he's not doing something he's supposed to do. Oh, do you go say, hey, guess what I did? Or no, or do you go pick him up? You know, that's why we have to be very careful, especially being online. I'm a big guy on Twitter. I fast from Twitter during Ramadan, but I'm big on Twitter. And you'll see a trending topic, and you say, hey, you know, for, for the older, older gentlemen uh, and, and sisters, just bear with me. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you'll see a trending topic. You say, well, what are they talking about? And you, you know, you look, and it said they're talking bad about it. Just that retweet, that's spreading the rumor. Just that retweet. And we don't want to do that. Do we want to eat the flesh of our brother's back? No, we do not. So we have to stay away from these things. We have to ask a lot for forgiveness. Yeah, you know what? I messed up. Let me ask forgiveness from the person who I've wronged and ask a lot for forgiveness. And that's what we have to realize. We're not perfect. There's not a single per perfect person on this earth. And we have to realize that. And as Muslims, we don't jump on other Muslims. You know, we're supposed to go to the aid of our brother, whether he is the oppressed one or he's the oppressor. If he's oppressed, we go help him out. If he's the oppressor, we go and say, hey, you're doing the wrong thing. And that's what we have to remember, that we're going to the aid of our brother because this is Islam. This is universal. Uh, and then as far as the, uh, the anger issue, yeah, that, that's tough. <laughs> All right. Yes. The same way you give dawah to anyone else is your, is your walk. Is your walk. Because we've all seen the person who every single day tells you how holy they are. And they want to sing their gospel hymns. Oh, you know, you see that. And then all, but then you're like, I know that guy. That's not how, and he's trying to, no, you need to be doing this. You need to be going to Bible study. You need to be doing that. Mashallah, the best doubt I got was from a Christian brother. His name is Jason Wright. He was a seven-year veteran in, in, in the NFL. He's actually from Diamond Bar. Right now, he's studying to get his MBA at uh, the University of Booth in Chicago. And this brother, he was, he was, he was on his dean. He, he read his Bible every day, on the team bus, on the team plane. He was straight up and down. He was clean. He wasn't flashy. He drove a Ford Taurus. And he just, every single day, it was just getting better, just getting better. He wasn't, oh, man, I'm so holy. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so humble. Hey, I'm so humble. Aren't, aren't I humble? I mean, that's not humility. That's not humility. The believers are the ones who are what? They're patient and they walk through the earth with humility. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be humble. And we're just supposed to lead, lead by example. Just, just do that. So for Tim Tebow, it's not like I would just go to him and say, hey, you need to read the Quran. Hey, you need to do this. Nope. You just do you. Because people start to take notice. A uh, short, a short story about that is on Fridays, Alhamdulillah, Friday in the NFL is a very short day. Uh, we get out about 12 o'clock, 12:30. So Alhamdulillah, I get, I get a chance to make Juma. But this, with our new uh, defensive coordinator, our new defensive coach, Ray Horton, he wanted us to meet every Friday, every Friday, every it was mandatory. Every single defensive player met. So they looked at me like, man, what's Hamza gonna do? I'm do what I always do. I'm going to go for Juma. And alhamdulillah, so, you know, you're getting dressed. Everyone else, you know, you wear shorts and T-shirt to work. And they see you every Friday just, you know, getting dressed. And say, oh, you know, are you going to the defensive meeting? You know, oh, alhamdulillah, oh, he has to go for prayer. It got to a point to where people wouldn't even ask me. Or if someone asked, someone else would say, oh, he's going for his Friday prayer. So it's just about the walk that you have. It's not that you're going around saying, this is what I'm doing. No. That's not the way Islam is. That's not the way a Muslim is. We have to lead by example just by doing our do, doing our do, doing our do every day, inshallah. The sister asked, how do you balance fasting with games and practice? 
we were just talking about that. It was so easy to fast today. Yeah. Wallahi. It was so easy. All we did was sit. We <laughs> yeah. played on the computer. We went for Juma. We drove out here. It was so easy. But, uh, you know, it's all about preparation. And, you know, everyone has heard this. You know, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Uh, last night, alhamdulillah, you know, they're saying, hey, you know, it's going to be the first day of Ramadan. You know, you, we knew Ramadan was coming. So you have to start that preparation now. Right now, you know, it's, it's the nighttime. We're going to go in for Tarawi. This is when you start to hydrate. You know, you see me, I have my three cups of water. This is, this is just what I do. I just sip, sip, sip. That's what I do throughout the night. Then when you wake up in the middle of the night, you drink some more. You drink some more. And it's all about preparation because I have to prepare, you know, physically and then mentally. First thing we do is give it to Allah. Say, oh Allah, oh Allah, Zoja, please make it easy for us. That's the first thing we do. The second thing is, 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 is we take action. Uh, Brother Rehan, he's a, a nutritionist. I think he's here today. But, you know, we, and we just talk and we just exchange, you know, different, different, different things that, you know, we would do and protein and all that stuff. You know, he can get into all that. So if you guys have a chance, talk to Brother Rehan. I believe he's still here, but right there. there he is right there. But it's, it's just about it's just about preparation, you know, and knowing your limits. You know, if we fast more often, we'll know what we can do because sometimes you get into Ramadan and it's, it's day 20 and then you realize, okay, now I can, now I'm fit. Now I can fast, you know. So we've wasted those first 20 days. So it's all about preparation. You know, we know we're going for Tarawi. Hydrate yourself. Still exercise, but don't try to exercise at lightning speed, you know, don't try to do what Brother Hussein does. You know, inshallah, he can show you after maybe a light workout, but, you know, we just have to prepare, prepare, prepare. Yes. Well, as far as me, I've actually had four of them. Mm. Yeah. But it, it's, I mean, it's the nature of the beast. What, a, what other sport do you have a guy of my stature, 205 pounds, running full speed to hit a guy that's 260 pounds? <laughs> it just, sometimes it just doesn't sound right, but w when you're out there, you just, you just do it. But um, it, it, it is something to watch and something to look into. Um, you see a lot of the people from the past, from the, 70s, 80s, 90s, that they're starting to have problems. There was, there was a lot of things that they didn't tell the players. Back then, it was just, you got your bell rung. This is football, toughen up, all of that jazz. Um, so it, it is, I, me personally, uh, for personal reasons, I keep a close, close watch on it and a close eye on it. I've talked to the, the guys who are supposed to, like the top specialists in the country out in Pittsburgh, and they said everything should be good. Everything should be clear, but at the same time, I, w I will say the it, it's not a, it's not a finished book. It's still open ended because we're still playing the game. We still don't know exactly what happened. There's been, I think there's what over 16 or 1800 players to a 18, team. 18. There's 1800 players, and the the turnover in the NFL is high, in and out, in and out. So who knows how many NFL players there has been since the start of professional football, and then the kids in college, which is even more, and then the kids in high school, which is way more. So I, th I think uh, in 10 years we'll, we'll know a lot more. I think right now it's kind of the hot button issue and it's getting a lot of press, but I think we're, we're a ways away from actually knowing what these hits do. 